Shabbos, Mitzvah Shabbos Lichas, where up to the Fine Gimel and Aleph will begin from the beginning of this subject, which is on base and base on the bottom. The Mishnah has two clauses here. I mean, it talks about Nadarim and it talks about Mumin, but the, each one of them is basically two clauses, similar. One is if somebody got engaged with a woman and made it conditional and said, I'm going to get engaged with you on the condition that there are no vows, you're not prone to make vows, because it makes life very difficult. And it turns out to be that she is prone to make vows, then the, basically it, it, it unravels entire marriage. We call it a mekartas. It was based on, on a misunderstanding. Case number two. Okay, it seems to be a disparate case. And the case number two is, he says to her, he marries her, no conditions. It turned out to be that she is such a woman that is difficult to live with because she makes vows all the time. This time, you have to give her a divorce, it seems. The mission doesn't mention the word divorce. All the mission says is you don't have to give her a ksuda because um, you can't live with her. It's not your fault, it's her fault. So therefore, she forfeits her right to a ksuda. But on the other hand, you do have to give her a divorce. Okay, that's what the Mishnah says, these two cases. And we will see later in the Gemara whether it's actually two separate cases or it's really one case. So, uh, or continuation of the first case. Says the Gemara, we have an argument of Rav and Shmuel, And that is as follows. It might be learned. Two lines from the bottom of the page. Kitcha al Tanai, he got engaged with a woman and made it conditional. And then, because when they got married and they consummated the marriage, stop. Didn't reiterate the Tanai. Just when he got married. How do we interpret that? Rav says, get. This time you need to get, even though you made a contingent on, on her not making vows, turned out to be that she does make vows. But because when it came to the actual marriage, you didn't reiterate this particular condition. So therefore we say you got married properly. And now if you want to separate, you have to have a divorce. Shmuel says, no. Even though you didn't mention it again at the time of the marriage, obviously you're relying on what you said a few months ago when you got engaged. And therefore, it's merely a continuation of that. And it turns out to be that she makes vows, the whole marriage unravels. Okay, I'm going to buy a buy says. So let's understand Rav. Why does Rav say you need a get? Why does Rav say that we ignore the fact that he made a condition at the time of engagement since he got married now? So, so it says a buy like Tame, don't say the time of the Rav, that the Rav, don't think that the reason for Rav is Kivun Shekonsastam, because now when it came to consummate the marriage, he didn't repeat this condition. There must be that Achoyle Achalatnoi, must have be that he completely pardoned her, completely uh, um, decided to be Moichler and forget about the case. He retracted on his condition. Don't say that's the reason, because if that would be the reason, then the outcome would be that now he would have to, uh, he would have to, uh, what do you call it? <clears throat> um, he would have to give her a ksuv as well, if he decides to divorce her. You know what the reason is? At the time of the Rav, you know what the reason of Rav is? Because a person, when he decided to live with her, he, he felt that he doesn't want to make conditions because he made conditions. turns out to be that, let's say, that she didn't meet the condition. They were never married. So what happened last night when you consummated the marriage? It was, it was out of marriage. It's Bilas Nus. And a person doesn't want that, so he decides, okay, now that we're living together, it doesn't matter what, what, uh, what it is. I'm sure if she's happy to continue with this marriage, probably she doesn't do any Nadarim. It doesn't matter. I am going to go ahead, and therefore the bill is not a Bilas Nus. But on the other hand, that's as far as, um, as marriage concerns. You need to give a get. But when it comes to the ksuva, when it comes to matter of money, he says, look, we talked about it before. And if I find that you have nadarim, even though there's no tonight, I can't live with you. And therefore, it's your fault because you're constantly making vows. So you forfeit your ksuva. So the reason is, this is the bottom line. This is a very important rule and many, has many ramifications in halacha. If do we make an assumption that a person does not uh, have a bi'ilus nus, and therefore it doesn't matter what he said before, but now if he consummated the marriage, he must have said, I don't care what, this is going to be a valid marriage. And, and Shmuel says no. Shmuel says he's relying on the conditions he made before and he's assuming that she has no tanoim. Turned out to be that she is prone to make vows and therefore the whole marriage unravels. I, as a result of that, the, the bi'ilus has nus, so be it. Okay, so that's the argument. Says the that's the argument. We already learned this argument not so long ago. And you've learned. 
What happens? Ktana, a young girl, Shulainina, a young girl, a Yisayma. Now, you know that a father can marry off his daughter. She's married Mahat But if the father passes away, the mother or the siblings can marry her off for her benefit, so she shouldn't be alone and to be taken care of. But it's only Midra Banan. When it comes to the age of 12, she has the right to walk out. She's Memayan. She says, I don't want to stay married with this guy. She just walks out. It's called Mian. So what happened to Tana Shalaymina? Uh, this person, Reuven, let's say, married this young girl and came 12 years old. She didn't go ahead with the meal. And they continued living together. The They continued living together. And they never said, okay, let's have another chuppah. They just continued living as husband and wife. They started out when she was 10 years old. And now they're continuing. How do we interpret the, 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 the beers that happened after 12 years old? Do we say it's a continuation of before and therefore she, they never really had Kedushin for the sake, they never had Bia for the sake of marriage, so she still only married Midura Bonan? Or do we say that no, that now when she became 12 years old, any Bia that he had afterwards, he must have had in mind, I want to consummate the marriage biblically, and now they're married Mahatay. So it says here, Oktana that was not in mind, the dealer she grew up, and then what happened was, Omda Venisus, she went ahead, she was 12, 12 years old in a bit, she decided to marry somebody else. She lived with somebody else. Now, if she's married to the first husband, Mahatoida, then the Kedushin with the second husband has no meaning. But if you're going to say that Mahatoida, she's not married to the first guy because they continued living together, a continuation of whatever they had before. And therefore, they were only married to Rabbanon. And when they had Bia after she was 12 years old, they never had a mind that this should be the marriage. They thought, no, they married already. They just continued living as husband and wife. So therefore, she was never married biblically to the first husband, only with Rabbanon. So now if she went ahead and she married another person, Mahatoida, she's married to the second person. With Rabbanon, she cannot speak with, with the second person because she was already married with Rabbanon with the first person. So therefore, she needs to have a get from the second person. But Mahatayda, she's married to the second person. But wouldn't, 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 she, wouldn't she have needed to, in, to explicitly enunciate the... the with Rabbanon, not from the Torah. Not for the, not for the Torah? Why Mahatayda? The Torah doesn't recognize their marriage in the first place. Right, okay. So... Rav says, ain't sicha get mishani, you don't need to get to the second person, why not? Because he says, as soon as she became 12 years old, if they had any marital relations, surely ain't Adam Isa Bilasa Bilasnus, he would have had in mind that this beer tonight is going to consummate a marriage, Mahatoyra. But so therefore, the second person's kedusha is meaningless. However, Shmuel says, sicha get mishani, Shmuel says, no, that all the beers she had with the first husband, the continuation of before, we don't have this rule that a person does not have bimuznus, and therefore she was never married Mahatayda to the first person. Mahatayda, she accepted Kedushin from the second person, she's now engaged to the second person. But the Rabbanon, we don't let her remain married to the second person, because the Rabbanon, she's still married to the first, so she needs to get from the second person. So it's the same principle. People make znus or not. Bimuznus or not. So you must have we need both arguments. Why? Because the e yitmar, if we only knew by he, I would say <clears throat> we only knew the k that case over there. I would say we know why by he come at over there. Rav says mishum the leka tuna. Over there, the case of ketan is not because I made a condition. It's a law. There's a law in place that says that a, a girl that's under twelve years old is only married midrabbah, and therefore everyone and everyone knows the law. It's, it's universal. Therefore, surely when it becomes 12 years old, Rav is of the opinion, definitely any, any future relations they had would have done it correctly, and he would have had in mind that Mahatayda were not married. But Abba Baha, in our case, where he, he came up, he, he came up and he made this Tanai, and then, and then he didn't mention it again. It's only something that he, uh, arbitrarily he decided that maybe maybe he's made it to Shmuel since he didn't mention it again, then he probably is not worried about it anymore. And he's happy, uh, he's in, um, he, he, sorry, maybe he's made it to Shmuel that it's extenuation, sorry, all the way around. Because it was arbitrarily, he decided to come up with it tonight. Maybe Yerav has made it to Shmuel that he, he still thinks it's extenuation before, that she has no Nagurim and she will listen to his tonight. And, uh, and, and he did not know, he did not realize that he has to have in mind when he has beer that this is not tight and forget about the tonight.
So maybe that was my Shmuel. The even in the case of the Tanai, only the Shmuel says that look, that he uh, continuation of before because he doesn't really realize that you know it's it's his own thing that he made up, and surely he thinks that she doesn't have any time. Abu Bahak, but in the case of the Tana, everybody knows that a Tana cannot get married. And the siblings cannot marry off my attorney. Everybody knows that. So therefore, surely when she was 12 years old and they continued living together, he would have fixed it up. He would have had a mind that she be married my toilet. And we might do it if we need both. Okay, so tonight, so we have a question we ask. It says in our Mishnah, we're asking a question now on the Machlekes of Rabbi Shmuel. It says in our Mishnah, case number two. Consistam, she married without any precondition. He married her without any, he got engaged without any preconditions. The Nimto Lenador, it turns out to be that they were in a door, that she's prone to make vows. Tate they can divorce because she makes it very difficult to live with her. But she lay big suba, she forfeits her suba. Now, because the Mishnah emphasizes she forfeits her suba, suba le boy, ha gita boy, but get you do need. Now, the Gemara understood that this case number two is not case number two. The Gemara understood that case number two is a continuation of case number one. What do you mean continuation of case number one? It means as follows. They got engaged, they, they got engaged, and he made it conditional that there are no vows. Then they got married without reiterating that condition again. And yet the Mishnah says, since you didn't reiterate it, you need a get. In other words, like Rav, that we're going to say that the, any that the, the came to the beer, ain't other Moise be lost, be lost, lost, and decided to forget about this tonight. Clearly, for our Mishnah, that Rav is right. Uh, my love, teach out tonight, is the Mishnah talking about continuation? Got engaged on this condition, then we contest them, then married, didn't repeat it again. And the Mishnah clearly says, because now the bee was consummated the marriage, he removed the tonight because he doesn't want it. Because the tonight stays in place and unravel the whole marriage and comes out the bee was bee is moose, and a person does not want that this beer to be smooth. Therefore, he removed the tonight, and that's why you need to get new to you to the shmuel. Very strong question on shmuel. Says so the Gemara, you learned the Mishnah wrong. The mission is not two separate cases. It's not one. It's not one continuation. It's a whole new case. Case number two. They never. He never ever ever entertained the idea of it tonight. And that's why we say you have to have a get. But if it would have been like you explained, a continuation of the first case says Shmuel, you don't need a get because it's because he get, entered the marriage as if she as agreeing that she met the conditions that he put into place at the time of the engagement. And he doesn't believe that a person doesn't make his business. So you better no, kitcha stam. This is talking about case number two in the Mishnah. They got engaged without any preconditions. They can't sustain with no preconditions. And therefore, you need to get. But on the other hand, there's no ksuba because she's making life very difficult and it's her fault. I will teach out tonight, but the way the way you learned, if they got engaged and he put down conditions in place, and then when they got married, but come to stand, but didn't mention a word, leading into a question. So what are you telling me in Shmuel's case, in the case where they got engaged on a condition? And then they got married with no conditions. You're telling me, right? You're telling me you don't need to get because. The whole condition, the whole marriage is unravels. I, the B, it turns into no, he doesn't care. So if so, why doesn't the Mishnah then make even a, uh, to, uh, say a greater Kiddush? Now what? Adetani, why does the Mishnah say, I'm a Kaddish, we got a woman engaged. I'm an Asher, and daughter, she has no vows in her. The Nimtzol and the daughter turned out to be that she was prone to make vows, or she had vows. Ain't no Mekadesh, that means the whole thing is a mistake, is an error. It's a Mekadosh. Listen and let the Mishnah stay a greater Kiddush. That after he made that condition, and then Konzostam, they married without any preconditions. Venim to the Dorim, it turned out to be that they were the Dorim. Ainam Kadesh is still a mistake because he's relying on the fact that during the engagement he made that condition. And then we would automatically know the Choshkin Ha. Surely, if at the time of, you know, if he mentioned it again at the marriage, and stuff to talk about, of course it's a mistake. So Shmuel answer is not a problem. It's exactly what the Mishnah means to say. He just misunderstood the Mishnah. Hachinami. It's exactly what the Mishnah is saying. The first case of the Mishnah is not the way you learned they got engaged and then he repeated again by the marriage. No, he mentioned the engagement, but did not repeat it again by the marriage. And yet the marriage unravels because the whole thing is a mistake because he relied on what was made up during the engagement. So he says, He got engaged with a woman and the condition is no vows. She has no vows. She had no baggage. The concept, um, they got married, didn't repeat it again. It turned out to be that they were vows. The whole condition falls apart. Then the Mishnah gives a new case. This is how Shmuel learns the Mishnah. He just, um, 
They got engaged, Tom. They conquered Tom, and then they got married. Notice he never made any preconditions. And then it turned out to be that she's prone to make all these adoring, which makes it very difficult for him to live with her. Then Taitse has to divorce her with a get. Shall I have a ksuvat le boy, I'll get the boy. Says the Gemara, I don't understand if the reason why he is a title to divorce her is because he cannot live with such a woman. Then it's like it's like the whole thing was a mekar toss. Why he does he have to give her a excuse to divorce her? Sorry, he could divorce her for any reason what he wants, especially if he's like giving if he's giving. Yeah, but we're saying that he has to give her a divorce. He can't just walk out and say that this marriage was based on a on a mistake on an error. And you still have to get, and the question is why. Why do you even have to give a divorce? You can say that I can't live with such a person. I never intended to live with such a person. Just like we learned later on, certain women are so, are so you know, so so uh, serious that the whole the, the condition falls off. Remember, we learned by Truman why you know she shouldn't eat Truman because maybe they'll find some pointers, maybe they'll find women, and they'll never marry in the first place to the coin. So he says, "Why by Suvi you don't need Amadi Epshibishna Droni?" She says, "Look, I can't live with her. Therefore, I don't have to give her a Suvi. He ought to get Nami like the boy. If so, he shouldn't have to give her a get as well. What's the difference?" Because since he, Shmuel says, that a person doesn't care if the, all the big illness that he had, all the relations he had till now, turns into Znus. So therefore, obviously, I never intended to live with a woman that's impossible to live with. And therefore, we should be divorced. <laughs> like we learned, you can't live with a snake in the same cage. Rabbi says, you're right. get You're right. In this case here, Turned out to be that she was, he never made any conditions, but turned out to be that she's an Isha Nadronis. Then the get that you need is only Midrabanan, because the fact is that you were married to Midrabanan, it should look like that you were divorced. Her. Only Midrabanan. That's how Rabban Abchizim. However, Rabban comes along and says that no, this Tanem, Sfuke Mesapkle. The Tana didn't know really. Can, is it true that people cannot live with a woman that constantly makes vows when she gets angry? Or people could tolerate, could put up with it. And that was the suffix of, of the Tana. So therefore he says, when it comes to money, she wants the ksuva, then Lakula. She has to prove that when the husband says, I cannot take this, he doesn't really mean it. Otherwise, she cannot take out any money. But Gabe Yisuda, when it comes to a get, it's a question of Yisuda, then L'chum will be machmer. Maybe Taka, you could tolerate it, just saying you can't. And therefore, you were married, give her a divorce. So it's like a suffix Mahatari. Comes along, Rabba. Now Rabba comes along, and he qualifies the argument of Rabba Shmuel. He says that I'm going to limit the argument of Rabba Shmuel. They argue in a certain case, and in a certain case, they all agree. And that's what the next Amr Ligamara is going to be to discuss what Rabbi says. Comes along, Rabbi says as follows. In other words, sometimes everybody is going to agree that the, whatever is happening now is merely a continuation of before, and therefore, if the whole thing unravels, you don't need a divorce at all. When is that? Amr Rabbi says Rabbi. Mach like is, when is the argument between Rabbi Shmuel only? And this is how we understood Rabbi in the first place. What happened? He was engaged to Leia and he made it conditional that you make no Nudar. And then she got he got engaged to Rachel as well. And you're allowed to marry two wives, Mary, and he didn't say a word. Didn't say a word. And it turned out to be that Rachel constantly made vows. So do we say, even though he didn't mention it when it came to Rachel, because he mentioned it by Leia, it's obvious that he established that he cannot live with a woman that makes the Dara, and therefore the whole marriage falls apart. Or do we say, maybe he loves Rachel so much that he's prepared to forego the fact that she has a vice. Everyone has vices. And her vice is that she makes the dorm and he doesn't care. But when Leia makes the dorm, it bothers him because he doesn't love her that much. He gets on with her very well, but doesn't love her as much as he loves Rachel. So, the, so, the, so this is what Rabbi says. When is the machlek is Rabbi Shmuel by two women? You know, if, if, do, do, do we say that, that that's when you have Rabbi Shmuel arguing whether he's that just be, even though he didn't mention it by Rachel, do we say like Shmuel says a continuation of what he said by Leia, and therefore the whole condition falls apart. You don't need to get. And Rabbi says no, Leia is one thing, and Rachel something else. Okay, but let's say it comes to the same woman. Let's say um, if he got engaged with a woman to Leia, and he made it conditional. And then six months later, they actually got married. He didn't mention it again. Then everyone, 
Everyone will say the same woman, he has to repeat it again. He already established that he doesn't want her to be an Adronis. Then everyone agrees that ain't she again. Everyone will agree when he got married, it's continuation before, unless he clearly says otherwise, continuation before, his condition is still there. And uh, if she turns out to be an Adronis, the whole condition falls apart. Yep. <clears throat> um, um, that's what Rabbi said. And of course, as soon as Rabbi or Rabbi Yisrael says something, their prize to the buyer doesn't let them go. Um, Rabbi, Rabbi says, what are you talking about? The Hamas Nisin, our Mishnah, initially our Gemara asked a question to Shmuel from our Mishnah because we thought it was one long case. And then Shmuel came along and said, no. Or we answered on behalf of Shmuel came along and said, it's talking about two cases. Or we, or we answered on behalf of Shmuel that it's two separate cases. That uh, Konsa Stam is talking about a, a totally different case. There was never a condition mentioned at all. And the first case is talking about Kitcha and then Konsa. So the the way we understood initially was one woman who, who made a condition at the time, he made a condition with the wife when they got engaged, didn't make a condition, didn't repeat the condition when they got married. So it's the same woman. And yet we thought that was the Machlech is Rav Shmu until we gave an answer. But when we thought that way, and nobody came along and said, oh, one second, man. Isha Achas, everybody agrees there's no argument. What are you asking us for? Everyone agrees that there's no thing. And because we asked that question, and uh, it seems, and we only asked an Ashmo, we didn't ask an Arab. It seems clearly that all the all the Amaraim understood that it makes no difference, one woman or two women, the same argument of between Rav and Shmuel. And you never spoke to Rav or Shmuel, you have no idea. You're just trying to come up with your own logic. So where do you come from? How do you come along with such a logic when nobody else thinks this way? That's what he's asking to his teacher. And we asked a question from it, it's on Shmuel. I'll tell you what Rab meant to say. Omar Rabba Rab said, Machlik is when is the argument of Shmuel, Take Betoy, Fisha Achas, one woman, but when one woman, how can you have one wife that's like uh, two wives? For example, you, this is how they, this is the case of the mission. It's one wife like two wives, and that's why you have an argument of a shmuel. What happened was he got engaged with this woman later, and sometime during the engagement, you got into a fight or something, and you divorced. When you got engaged with her the first time, you talked about this condition, I don't want you to have any tonight. And then they got divorced. Two months later, they made up, they teased each other, whatever it was, and now they got engaged again. The second engagement, he didn't mention a word about to know him. So now it's one woman, but it's like two separate events. It's not a continuation. You know, they got engaged and then they got married. Got engaged, divorced, engaged again. So now is an, is an argument, Rav Shmuel. Rav says it's a new thing. That's it. Now there's no more tonight. Uh, there's nothing to do with that. We don't care about Neda. According to Shmuel, it's still a continuation of the before. It's the same husband, the same wife, nothing changed. Still a continuation of the before. So we have an argument. But if it would be only one woman, there was no divorce in between. You got engaged. And you said, I don't want you to be an Adronis, otherwise when there's no marriage here. And then six months later, they got married. Everyone will agree. If it turned out to be she's an Adronis, the whole marriage unravels the Mecca toss. Says the Gemara inside. Says the Gemara, one woman like two women. There's only one woman alone. Everyone agrees. Ain't a You don't need to get. Okay, now we're going to the Gemara. Now we're going to the Gemara. Now we're going to the Gemara. Now after we explain what Rabbi said, Abai is still unhappy. Ace I'll ask you a question from the following from a Bryce. It says, Kitcha Betois. If let's say the husband got married to this woman, it was based on an error. But the Bryce doesn't spell out what the error is. And that's why Abai is going to conclude that the error is you said to her, I'm marrying you on the condition that there's no vows. And it turned out to be that she has that she makes vows. She has plenty of baggage. Case number two, Upachas Meshava Prutta. That what happens, he gave her less than a prutta. We can learn a condition in order to marry a woman, to get a woman engaged. You have to give a kesef, and the minimum value of kesef has to be the value of a prutta. But he gave less than a prutta, which means there's no marriage. The chen cotton or a child, a boy, she kiddush. Everyone knows that a boy cannot be mekadish, you have to be bar mitzvah. Now, avapi, so none of these three are, are engaged. But even though he continued sending her gifts afterwards. So don't assume that these gifts, let's say she became like he became an adult, or the gifts are worth more than a pruta, or whatever the mistake was, was fixed up. And he gives a gift. Don't think that the gifts are like a new form of engagement. All the gifts are is a continuation of whatever was there before. And therefore, there's no engagement here whatsoever. 
right? She's not engaged. Why? Because any gift that he gives her is merely because he thinks he's already engaged, even though he's not. It's all continuation of the first Kedushim, which are not valid. However, then the Braisa says, the Imbol, but if they consummate the marriage, um, then if they consummate the marriage, then Connor. Then they are Connor. No, he consummated the marriage after he became an adult, or he consummated the marriage, um, even though he gave a Kedushim, not a Prutu, but he consummated the marriage now, and the beer became now the, the marriage. And, and whatever this mistake... He would have to was, enunciate that. He would have to enunciate that. He would have to say that specifically. Oh, otherwise, you know, get back, you know, otherwise, you get back to the same question. You don't have to say anything. You just have a mind. But what, we you get have a, mind. Why don't you get back to the same question you had earlier? Bill says so it's, 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 We're going to see. That's what we're going to ask. Before we say, we automatically assume that a person does not have Beelzebub. So if they went ahead and they had relations, must be that they both had a mind to be married. Okay, that's that's Tanakama. And Rabbi Shimon ben Yehuda, Mishum Rabbi Shmuel, Rabbi Shmuel, Rabbi Shimon ben Yehuda, the name of Shmuel says, "Im balu loikana." That beer doesn't make a difference, right? So according to the first opinion of them, hey, beer, the kind of sounds like Rav. That uh, ain't not the most of Bilas and Bilas and 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 Bishmal holds that the B doesn't change anything to the relation before, and therefore there's no marriage. This is the argument of Rabbi Shmuel. That's what it seems here. Okay, so what's have to do with anything? But he's Rabbi is going to say we're talking about one woman here, and you, Rabbi, said before that if it's the same woman, uh, if this, everyone agrees that it's situation before, and there's no condition here. We're talking about the same woman, as we'll see in a minute. Talking about the same woman, and yet we're saying according to Tanikama. That ain't Adam Oisib is no Rabbi would hold. Yep, that they're married now. And therefore, they need to get. But the Toysh, how do we see that? Because my love, Toysh, the daughter. When we say Toysh, what are we talking about here? Must be that he, he made a conditional that there's no vows. And, 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 and she did have vows. Okay. So they're not really married. But if they had beer, then they are. Why? Because we're going to say people don't want the beer to turn into snus. So therefore, he dismisses the try. Just like that, I would do my one woman. That's the question he asked that Abba. Says the Gemara, Loy no. Toys, Pachash or Brutu. We're not talking about here a Tanai of the Durham. We're talking about a Tanai. Uh, no Tanai. The, what happened was you gave less than a Brutu. So you, the problem was, it's a legal question that you gave her condition which is less than a Brutu because you thought for whatever reason that less than a Brutu is valid condition. And therefore the Tanakama says, but if now you went ahead and you had beer, you're definitely now married. And why is that? Because this is a universal law, and everybody knows, or everybody will be told, everybody becomes aware that you cannot give Kedushin less than a Pruta. So if now he continues to have beer, then surely the beer was the same Kedushin. But if it comes to, uh, to a Tanai, to a Tanai of the Durham, Rab is right. Everyone agrees. It's a, not everyone knows the law. Everyone could be this continuation of the four. And I want that there's um there's uh, what do you call it? there's no condition here at all. That's not what the price is talking about. <clears throat> so the Gemara, um, because in other words, he assumes when he had beer with her, he assumed that definitely she knows I have a condition that she has not known the Durham. Surely she has known the Durham. So he doesn't think in his mind that I have to have a mind when I have beer that this is a shame condition. Because he thinks that everything is all right. Right? Everything hunky dory. That's what he thinks. <clears throat> like Rabba. Says the Gemara, how can you say that? In the Mishnah gives examples. One case is Kitcher Betoyz. The next case is Pach Meshavah Prutu. Obviously, they're two separate cases. What are you telling me that Kitcher Betoyz got engaged by mistake? He was talking about he gave a lesson to Prutu. But that's the next case. Says the Gemara, Kitcher Betoyz, Pach Meshavah Prutu. And says the Gemara, Perusha Kamefarej. But no, it's one case. It's explaining. What do you mean Kitcher Betoyz? What was the toss? It was lesson to Prutu. Kitcher betoz kaiser, ki going to kitcher pachas or brutu, he gave a lesson brutu. Says the Gemara, so be my commitment, what exactly is the argument then? If we're talking about less than a shavu brutu, how can one of them say that they have beer, uh, they did it in Shane Kedushin, and they're kainer, that's a Tanakhama, why does Bishmol say they're not? What are they arguing about? Mar Sava, one of them holds, Adam Yedei, everyone knows, Shane Kedushin, Taifse, Pachas or brutu, everyone knows that you cannot get engaged someone less than a brutu. So if they have beer, surely they had in mind that this beer should be for the sake of Kedushin. The government abolished in Kedushin. 
But a Mar Savar, and that's a Tanakama. But a Bishmal Hoch, not everyone knows the war. Ain't Adam Yadeish, ain't Kiddush Tayyuch or Prutan. Not everyone knows it. But Haraya, he gave less than a Prutan the first time. So obviously he didn't know that you cannot be engaged less than a Prutan. So the Chikabal, so when they had Bila, he thinks they're already engaged. A Daiti Kiddush Hashanim Bal, he thinks they're already engaged, you know, when he gave her that, whatever coin it was he gave her. And therefore, whatever Bila had, he thinks they're already, they're already in, 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 in a relationship. Okay. Uh, Bai asked now another question. Aisve, I'll ask you, Rabba, you, Rabba, say that everyone agrees. We'll ask a question. It says, we'll have this in Gemara Kedushin. It says, I will get married to you. I am going to uh, have beer with you and have beer on the condition that this should turn into a marriage that your father later, when we meet your father, whenever it is, he agrees. Now, Afa <clears throat> P, even though. Even the father later on says, uh, I'm not interested. She's still Mukadesh's because once they have Bia, the Bia means there's no to name. A person doesn't want his Bia to be, be his Lus. And therefore, uh, definitely they had a mind that would be regardless of what, it'll be marriage. Shima Yehuda said the name of Rab Shimon. No, it totally depends on the father. The father wants Mukadesh's. Over here, the it's like one woman. It's right, we're talking about the same woman here. <clears throat> it's the same woman here that you got engaged with and you made it conditional on the father. So it's one woman, and you went ahead and you had beer. And yet, it says over here, and yet we have an argument whether the he thinks that he got engaged, and then he said, We're going to continue with this. And, and the smach that your father agrees. And we see here there's a machlek. Do we say that the moment that you have beer, ain't other mice, be loss of bill is loose, and you forget about all the conditions? Or do we say no? It's still based on that condition that you made in the beginning that her father will agree, and the father didn't consent. Then there's no marriage. Either be it turns into loose, so be it. But at the time of the beer, he thinks that everything will work out. He's optimistic, he thinks it'll work out. So think about again, a question on Rabbi who said when it's one woman. That everyone agrees that whatever happens in the future is based on the past, and therefore the whole thing is a mecca toss. So it, even the father, um, <clears throat> so why are you telling me that even the father doesn't agree according to Anakamba, they're still married? Says the Gemara, no. You know what they're arguing about? Nothing to do with that. What happened like this? Over there, they're arguing a different case altogether. You know what they're arguing about? Everyone agrees. That if he said the father has to agree, the father didn't agree, uh, whatever Bila did after it doesn't matter because continuation before the whole thing unravels. He was talking about, he said, on the condition that your father doesn't object. Or when you say your father agrees, do you want the father to agree? Or your main thing is you don't want your father to object. You don't care the father is very happy with you as a, as the, as the future son-in-law. But as long as the father doesn't object, that's good enough. What did you mean with those words, the father agrees? I don't want to object. I don't care if, he, if, if he's excited about it. I don't want to be to object. But Hashas, the fact is, he didn't object. Therefore, it's a valid marriage. That's why. When he said I'm, um, that I'm your father agrees, I want to hear him say, I agree. Not I want him to protest. I want to hear that I need to hear that your father consents, agrees with this. Says the, the whole and the father did not say hey, did not say yes, he just didn't object, and therefore the marriage unravels. That's the argument. Nothing to do with is how we interpret when you say agrees. Do you mean it shouldn't object? Do you mean that and that's a tacit agreement, or do you actually want a verbal expression there? You know, yes. Ace, I'll ask you another question. Okay, we have a case of it. Let's learn the case of it, then I'll tell you where, what the argument is. Aktana Shehesia Avia. What happens? The father married his daughter Leah to a, to a guy, and Ma'atreira, they are married. And he's Garsha. And now he gave her divorce. Ma'atreira, she's divorced. But what happens now is, even though she's still a minor, she's no longer under the control of her father. The moment the father gave her to another person, and then she was divorced. She's now a freelance. She's now totally free. So if anybody marries her off again, while she's a minor, she's only married with Rabban. So at this stage, Mahatayda, she is a divorcee of this person. Let's say Reuven married her. She is now the, the, considered the Grusha of Reuven. But what happened was, then Reuven remarried her as a minor. So now he's only married to her with 
And then Reuben dies and they were childless. So does he, she have the mitzvah of Yibum or not? Everyone agrees no. Why? Because Mahatoida, she's not the wife of Reuben, she's the divorced wife of Reuben. The second marriage is not recognized from the Torah because she's a minor and she's no longer under control of her father. It's only the first marriage that's recognized my Torah and the Torah recognizes the divorce. So she is now the divorcee of Reuven and a divorcee cannot marry the brother-in-law. And she does not have the mitzvah of Yibu Maha Torah, even though the Rabbanon she does, not Maha Torah. So the Rabbanon agree with Rabbi Lezer on this point. Where they disagree is, what about the same story, but with an adult? Reuven was married to this adult woman Matayla, they married, then he divorced her, and then he married her a second time. Matayla, they married again. So now Matayla, if, if he dies childless, Matayla, well, she's no, he's no longer the divorcee, the ex-wife of Reuben. He is now the wife of Reuben, the widow of Reuben. So Matayla, yes, there's a mitzvah of So Rabbanon, but Rabbi Lezer disagrees. They may say, Rabbi Lezer disagrees. He says, since we all agree, if she would have been a minor, she cannot marry the brother-in-law, then we should be goyzer that even if she's an adult, don't let it happen, because people don't understand the differences and the nuances, it becomes too difficult, too complex. So in the, such a case where the same person took her back, if originally she was a divorce, um, um, an ex-wife, and then she became a, a widow, we don't want to do yibum. Why? Because of the case of a ketana. So that's what we were saying here. So the Chacham Mamayit Rebbe in the case of Ektana, Ektana she see Avir, father married her and his gashas she matayna she was married to Reuben and divorced. But he is saying the bechayov so halachically she's now considered an orphan even though her father's alive, but she he's no longer in control. The Hechzira and then Reuben remarried her. In this case now matayna she's the ex of Reuben. It's only with the she's the wife of Reuben, so therefore she chalitz of lemis abemis. Everyone agrees there's no yibum here, but you do chalitz because with Rabbanon she's the wife of Reuben. Bipnei she gedur she gedur she gemurim because she was divorced from Reuben mahatayra. Aber the ain chazaros a chazar gemurim. But when she got remarried to Reuben, it's only with Rabbanon. But medvar amudim. When is this talking about she gives the shiktana? When is all this said? They got divorced when she was young. The hechzira kishiktana, and then they got remarried when she was young. So therefore, the first time is Mahatayda, the second time is Rabban. But what happens, Girsha Kishiktana? What happens, she got divorced when she's a Tana, so Mahatayda, she's no longer. But the Chizira Kishiktana. But he remarried her now, according to the Rabban. He married her now when she's an adult. So now she's, he's married Mahatayda. The second time, she's married Mahatayda. Okay, that's fine. What does that do with our Hogan Maria? We'll see him in. Case number two. Shechzira Kishiktana, Ruben took her back again. Okay, he married nine years old, divorced at 10, remarried at 11. Right, only married Rabbanon, but the godla etzli, they continued living way past twelve years old, and the question is, the beers that happened after twelve years old were they a continuation of the marriage before, and therefore they're only married with Rabbanon, or do we now say that since a person does not make the beers nus, definitely he had a mind that this should be now a full marriage mahatayna. The mace oichelets is oimisya bemis. Clearly, the mission says that in the second case, she can go ahead and marry the brother-in-law, which means that the Torah recognizes the marriage. Why would the Torah recognize the marriage? They got married at the age of 11, because all the beers that they had after 12 years old, are be the first beer after 12 became L'Shem Kedusha for marriage, which means that the concept of Ein Adam Oysa be lost in Bilaznus, like Rav. And then he continues, but Rabbi Lezer disagrees. Rabbi Lezer Amru, in all of these cases, we only do chalitza because of a gzera. We are worried that people don't understand, you know, that she's now an adult or she's still a minor. They don't understand the difference. And, and as a minor, we all agree that she should not marry a brother-in-law because she's only married to Reuven with Rabbanon, but she's an ex-wife of Reuven Mahat So therefore, in all instances, I don't care if she's an adult now or not. But oh, and now the more leads into the question. Over here, the Ketois Isha Achaz Dami. Over here, in the case where he took her back, they took back the same wife when she was a minor. And then she grew up by him. So when he he married her, now we're focusing on the second marriage. He married her and they stayed married. Nothing happened. There's no divorce in between. Nothing happened. They stayed married. And we're talking about one wife here. And yet the, and yet the, the, the Chachamim say that the beer was the same condition. You, Rabbi, said when it's one one wife and continuing story. It's all a continuation of the beginning and therefore there's no uh, bias, the shame marriage. Clearly here there is. So hoch over here, um, it's like one woman, right? Because, you know, and this is arguing. 
Says the Gemara, I'll explain to you what the argument is. The, the argument is a horse of Nami Bahokam, if this is the argument. <clears throat> um, and and, the, and the, the idea here is the only time Rabbi Shmuel argues is by a, in the case of a Tanai, by Nadorim. Here has nothing to do with Nadorim, but the Gemara is trying to equate a Tana going into a Gdola, whether we say that they're starting to, you know, the, the, in the middle they change the beard and now the same condition, or whether the continuation of before is the same thing by Nadorim. What's the difference? That's what the Gemara thinks. And the Gemara is going to say there's a big difference between the Dorim. And the case of the of this Tana. And the case of the Tana, we're having an argument, but the case of the Dorim, everyone thinks that the husband is convinced that if he told her a when you got engaged, I don't want you to, I made it tonight, I don't want any of the Dorim. Then he gets married, he assumes that she knows that, and that if she's prepared to get to continue with this marriage, she obviously has no baggage and no Nadorim. It doesn't change. And therefore, when they had beer that night, he didn't think, oh, let's make this beer a shame condition. He thinks that everything is valid from before. Why should it be different? He explains. Um, everyone knows everyone knows that when you marry this girl 11 years old you're not married you're only married with Rabban. even though you were, you were married before that was because the father gave it to you but now that you married her on her own everyone knows that a minor cannot give herself off to marriage so therefore at the age of 12 if everyone knows that, and they, and they continue living together, surely he had a mind that now I'm going to marry you, Mahatayda. So they got Mahatayda, the same condition. And now it's Mahatayda. That's what the Chacham holds. And therefore, this married Mahatayda. But in Sava, the other one holds, not ain't Adam Yadeyash, ain't Kedusha Ketana Klum. Not everyone knows that the Kedusha Ketana is not, is not valid, especially in this case, where a few years ago we were married Mahatayda. So not everyone realizes that now you're only married with Rabban. He thinks, what? Well, she was younger then, I was married Mahatayda. She's older now. Maybe I'm also married Mahatayda. So therefore, when they had continue having relations after 12, not necessarily, he said, oh, I have to make sure that I'm getting married now Mahatayda. The Kabbal, adaited the Kedusha Yishayin in Kabbal. That he's what? That he's continuation of the first Kedusha. And... Um, and then the Gemara continues this whole discussion. The Gemara is going to bring Rab Yechen and says the same thing as Rabba, but I'll let you uh, continue tomorrow. The Gemara. Okay, everyone have a Shavuot Tov, a good luck.